Hi everyone. Hope everybody is doing great. So today we're going to talk about resistance that's happening in the vehicle. Have you ever thought of in childhood whenever you pedal a bicycle under low pressure what happens is you feel lot more resistance to overcome when you pedal the vehicle whereas when you have enough inflation pressure in the bicycle you won't face much of an force right which is with light amount of force you could just pedal up it right so think for a minute why is it that so right most of you i think would come up with saying it's because of the area is being increased the contact area that's being laid on the contact patch is going to get increased hence the resistance going to increase right so that's not actually you know true the engineering background or engineering concept that goes behind is what we are going to talk about today that is rolling resistance so what all rolling resistance is going to contribute is it's a resistance when i say resistance it's called as a back force any force that opposes the motion of the uh, thrust or the locomotive we consider that as a bad force why is that so because it's going to oppose the direction in turn we are going to lose the uh, purpose again we are going to go against the uh, motion of the direction right so we kind of going to dive little dive into where it's the source of rolling resistance from there we are going to dictate back to resistance curve how different resistance contributes to total resistance right so look at this particular diagram here you can see here whenever a tire sits firmly in the surface you're going to have a even distribution here right so this condition is only for static meaning when the vehicle is not moving right this is fine because the pressure is evenly distributed all through the contact patch in static condition but the problem comes in what if your tire pressure is not even right or i could say is dynamic condition means now your vehicle is start rolling right what what's going to happen right in that case what happens is due to the difference in pressure because at, at the end of the day you're going to use tire right that's just an elastomer so what happens is you keep running the tire number of times so you load the tire so some part of the tire i would say this part of the tire is in the compression whenever you run the tire this is under the load this part of the tire is also under the load and this is quite experiencing this force right so you're going to bulge the tire you're going to squeeze the tire from the upside down here the load of the passenger and here from the road input right so some part of the tire is going to get compressed for sure and some part of the tire is going to get decompressed right so since it's a rubber you're going to load the rubber instantly and unload the rubber in a time same time frame but the only big challenge that you're going to face is the loading time and the unloading time is not going to be same you are seeing incremental or measurable difference right the rate at which you load take an instance you take a piece of rubber and uh, give a punch the rate at which it absorbs is not necessarily going to be the rate at which it dissipates right and that's the problem the time it's going to get regain it's the cut it the first instance at point 1 and point 2 they both are not same since it's going to take a uh, time and the rubber has viscoelastic property and it has an it's going to emit a heat loss or hysteresis loss right this is the form where your you know we'll go back to the uh, bicycle uh, analogy where we're talking about the more you pedal with the low pressure the more the resistance right where the force is all going on right the more you pedal the more it's going to get into converted into heat form hence all your energy is been converted into heat form right so to thus control this we have to make sure you have a right inflation pressure or tire pressure in your vehicle second 
you drive you, you have a right kind of tire and driving range is prescribed in the particular speed right don't overdo it or don't underdo it right so we could, to conclude you're going to have a resistance curve on the overall map you could see a rolling resistance doesn't change with speed that's something really important right we can understand from this graph whereas you can see air resistance and grade resistance are a direct function of your vehicle speed you can see as the speed increases your resistance keeps spiking up right because think about it when you drive a vehicle at 10 km you have a very less wind hitting the vehicle when you drive the same vehicle at 120 km per hour you're going to have a higher resistance right so that's the proof that you're going to have a a linear rise when the vehicle goes into state right and so as the grade but only the rolling resistance is independent of the vehicle speed which could be seen here right which means which will bring me to say that rolling resistance is a constant res resistance whichever speed that you're going to go be it 10 km all the way up to the maximum speed rolling resistance is going to be always present because it comes from the tire itself right so we try to reduce it to a good good extent but yes we do admit you can't neglect rolling resistance 100 percentage so what's going to happen if you just remove the entire resistance you're going to suffer in braking right that's for this video we'll catch you on another video right